thing. So at what point did you make the transition or was it the whole time from like 3D archery to target archery? Um, I got, I honestly got a little bit bored in 3D archery pretty fast. And part of the, part of what I didn't like about it, there was just, I felt like I was going to the same places all the time because there was, I'm trying to think, I turned pro in 98. So by like 2003, I just felt like I would land, know how to get to the shoot without even like, wouldn't even need to like look at a map. I'd just know where to go. And then you go to these courses and it would be like, well, a lot like, you know, we shot Big Sky together, Mm -hmm. you know, for the Total Archery Challenge. And we've shot the same course because it ends in a good place, you know? Um, But there's certainly targets that you, like you would be like, oh, last year we had the white bunny right Right. here, you know? And so it got to the point where it was like that. I was going to places where I'm, you know, 26 or 30 weekends a year, I'm traveling to, to do tournaments. And it just felt super repetitive. And in the end, I realized there's probably 10 or 12 people that are fully capable of winning like any weekend. But it's almost like if you had that same tournament, you know, two consecutive days over and over and over again, there's probably like five that would win it differently each of those times. And I don't know, it just came – it it just got to be stale for me. I got, you know, I just really got bored with that. And it got to the point where I pretty much had it set in my mind of I'm a target archer to be a better bow hunter, you know? And that was like my mentality is I was just, I could barely be focused by the time the world championships rolled around in August. I barely cared because I just wanted to be hunting in September and you know that I, it, the hunting was always the focus for me and it was like i almost i got more out of it so you know i just eventually i did what i needed to do in competitive archery to like help me build a platform to where i really wanted to go which is i've always liked to to coach you know and 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 i've always liked really good coaches you know i've liked I'm the type of person where I liked coaches that like, honestly, that like yelled at me and were like, Harry's had coaches where, you know, Sharon said, that guy's just a dick. Like, I'd, I kind of think I would love that guy, Mm -hmm. you know, if he like grabbed my face mask and he's yelling at me, like it would make me do better on the next play. Whereas now as an adult, I've learned there's certain people where if you did that, you're not getting that result. <laughs> Freaking breakdown. <laughs> yeah. So so wait a second. So you're doing the target archer thing, and then, or sorry, you're doing the 3D thing. Then you start doing target archery. Like, and well, like, at what point are you part of Team USA, and you're putting on the Team USA stuff? Dang man, I don't like have my whole life outlined. So. Um, I had retired, I, you know, I got sick of it, I retired. And I was working at a bow manufacturer, you know, didn't go back to that, but at 18, um, you know, I started working for this archery shop, didn't like the one-on-one experience that that archery shop owner was given people buying new equipment. And I was spending a lot of time with people. And so I got called in and he told me, you know, hey, do not spend that much time with people when they buy new gear. If they go over 15 minutes, they need to be paying coaching time per hour. Hmm. And I just said, well, this, you know, no one was in the shop and I didn't have anything else to do. Why wouldn't we help this guy out? And I remember he said, well, if you want to run a business that way, then you need to go start your own archery shop. So I just thought, oh, okay. (laughs) And so I went and started my own archery shop um, about 45 miles away at, it was actually our, my family had a, had a horse ranch in Southern Wisconsin at the time, my mom and my sister. So I ended up uh, building a pole building there and start my own shop. And that was the same time I started shooting professionally and then got offered a job from a bow manufacturer to move to Northern Wisconsin 
to you know come in as like an early sales rep. So I ended up working for this bow company and competing. So I mean, my life was archery, archery twenty hours, archery <laughs> twenty hours a day, and then I kind of got burned out with it, and I found myself liking going fishing or going hunting or just doing something that wasn't like training, training, training for archery. And then um, I had retired for like a few months. And then retired I, from? I kind of just said, I'm not going to shoot professionally anymore. And I just stepped away. And I was doing some coaching at like, I was doing a lot for some different like youth camps and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and I remember seeing another archer at like at a trade show and he and he said something about you know i heard you're not shooting anymore and i just said yeah i got you know bored with it and i kind of just jokingly said you know maybe i'll come over to target archery because 3d archery is all like foam animal targets mm -hmm. with molded in scoring rings um, ranging from, you know, the size of a dime, you know, up to like what would be considered just the vitals, which would be bigger. Uh, but like then target, dinner, like a dinner plate size. Yeah. But then for target archery, there's several different formats and that's bullseyes, you know, with scoring rings, but a lot of different games to play, right? You know, there's tons of different formats of shooting at a bullseye target, different distances, some, you don't know the distance. You have to estimate it. Some have like multiple size faces. Some are certain amount of arrows at this distance, certain amount at that distance, that distance. But anyway, I, I said to this guy, um, yeah, maybe I'll just, I don't know, maybe I should just try target archery. And I remember um, he looked at me and goes, come on in. The water's fine. Oh, <laughs> famous last word. Like and that was it. <laughs> I was like, okay, when's the first tournament? And the first, he told me the first tournament was um, at the Arizona Cup in uh, at the Ben Avery. Did you ever shoot at the Ben Avery Center no. in Arizona? Uh, so that was the first one, and ended up, you know, ended up in the medal, you know, gold medal match with that guy at that event. With that guy. With that guy. <laughs> in your first event. Yeah, that one. And I showed up like everything I had was wrong because, you know, there's – I don't know how to describe it. It would be like if you did, you know, tactic, you know, tactical competition and then someone asked you to go to a sniper event and then you, like, showed up with your M4 or yeah, something. Yeah. You know, I don't know. No, it's, it's, it's mission specific. Yeah. They're both archery, but one of them has – like you're standing around, you got more time to shoot or whatever, less time to shoot. Your just gear is going to be different the whole nine yards. Yeah. So I remember uh, right before that medal match, um, and as it happened, I was low in the brackets. He was, you know, very high in the brackets, but we were on opposite ends of the brackets. And so at this center, you know, there's, a, you know, it's, let's say it's a hundred yards wide. I was like at this end and he was at that end. And as you shoot against someone and go through the brackets, you just come to the middle. Mm -hmm. So like when I won my semifinal match, I remember like looking over and I, you know, I saw that he won and I'm like, okay, here we go. And he comes over and he said, man, he's like, how I see, he said, how, how are you dealing with it? And I said, dealing with what? And he said, uh, well, I've won this nine times and, you know, everyone wants me to lose. And he said, so I can imagine like, you know, the pressure you're feeling, you know, being that guy. And I said, man, I, th I see it the other way. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, dude, I'm out here. My equipment's a joke. <laughs> I said, I'm out here. I'm a 3D shooter. I got the wrong freaking bow. I got the wrong arrows. Never even shot this far. And I said, and I'm getting ready to roll up on you. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, you won this nine <laughs> times? And honestly, I could see, like, that was, you know, that cracked him. And I ended up getting the gold medal there. Oh, you so the, the first time you won it? <laughs> yeah. That's freaking nuts. So then I guess that pretty much kicked off your target archery career. Yeah, yeah. So we um, – and there was a lot of mis like that kicked off my target archery. So I did one type, then I did another type, and then I went into field archery, which is my favorite. It's kind of like the tack, but with 
with different size bullseyes. And granted, you know, in the pro class, these guys aren't missing. It's like you need perfect scores. You know, you really do. And I went to this field, um, this field tournament and just sucked at it because half of it is marked. The other half is unmarked. Mm, so you so unmarked have, meaning unknown distance, unknown distance, which in archery is a problem if you don't know the distance, cause your arrow is w- way slower than a bullet. So, um, I wasn't good at it and ended up buying myself an entire field round and like, you know, reading up on, you know, target faces and then ended up figuring out a mathematical formula to estimate distances using like the circles in my scope and the circles of the bullseye. Mm -hmm. So I'd like frame the side of my scope to the edge of the target. And then I memorized where my center dot would be based on the rings and just memorized a, a gauging, a distance gauging formula, which is what everybody does, but most people keep it secretive on how, you know, what their system is. Um, but because the targets are all regulation, they have to be the same size, mm-hmm. you can figure it out. So then um, I got good at that, you know, and, and that was kind of my favorite. And then, you know, made, made a team, made a U.S. team, and then went over and competed, I think my first – international tournament was in Croatia and, you know, freaking just loved, meddled there and, you know, loved freaking when they pulled that American flag up and like you got to hear your anthem, it was just like, okay, this is freaking, this is awesome. And so how long did that career run for? That career ran until the archery, world archery decided to do a world cup And they decided to make the World Cup. Um, So at the World Cup, I think only two at the year. At the time, it was maybe two or three archers. You had to be on on a team, um, would shoot in the World Cups. But whoever the finalists, the top four were at the end of the World Cup, then you had to go to the World Cup finals, which was like a big thing. And... They decided to add one tournament and move the World Cup Finals. It was like September 15th this Ooh. year. And so I remember um, World Archery telling me, you know, hey, if you're going to shoot on the World Cup team, you have to give us the commitment that you will not only do all four World Cups, but if you make the World Cup Final, that you will also participate in the World Cup Final. Otherwise, we're going to find someone that will, you know, because we don't want to like end up making a final and then someone don't can't get off work or whatever. And so I, you know, it was in September. I just said, I am not competing in archery in September. And for everyone that doesn't know, September is freaking prime. That's hunting season. (laughs) Yeah. That's when you, you're only thinking about, you're thinking about one thing and one thing only. (laughs) Yes. Just freaking hunting. That's it. (laughs) That's it. And so you, Kind of walked. Yeah, I walked. Mm-hmm. Now, 